up. <laughs> Bobby was gone for so long, I forgot that part happened. Good morning, Unity Church. I am Professor Karen. <laughs> I run the Hero Hotline Center. Uh, welcome to church this week. This is our VBS kick kickoff. Some of our VBS kids are here. Grant Ger or Graham Germeyer would like to be introduced. He's being baptized today. Hi, Grant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the time where we share news and needs in the church. Uh, one of them is, will all the volunteers for VBS stand up, please? Okay, so the vol yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, stand up. Anyway. Hey, Becca's here. Hey, everybody, Becca's here. Everybody ask her about her. Don't sit down to New Hampshire and Maine. Okay, let's uh, pray for our VBS volunteers. Our great God, we give you thanks that uh, we have a kids program midsummer that gives kids a dip into what it means to follow you, what it means to be part of your people. We pray that we would rise to the occasion every day and be the people you mean us to be so that we model what they are meant to be. And we pray that it would be fun because you are a God of laughter and of joy as well as sorrows and tears. And so we pray that this week would be one of joy. And we pray for all things to remain healthy and good. No one to need the Heimlich maneuver. No one go to the hospital. Everybody know where the first aid kits are. Everybody to have good passing times. No slugging in the corridors by the adults or the kids. We pray that you, God, would cover it all and you would give each of these volunteers an extra dose of joy and satisfaction. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you. Uh, anybody have news and needs? Anybody besides Donna, who's all the way at the back? Okay, well, I have a news and need about Donna, but I got to be in the front when I give it. I just want everyone to know. Oh, go slow because. She's, she's got a, oh yeah. Ruthie's surgery went well. Yes, it did. And um, she's home, so that's all I just want to know. Okay. Yeah, Ruth Hutchinson, who we're praying for, is recovering. She's doing well. When I said, uh, hey, Ruth, we'll see you at church tomorrow, she said, no, 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 Donna's too busy. And I was like, yeah, right. Hi, Ruth. Everybody wave at Ruthie. <laughs> Hopefully she's watching. Uh, but she's recovering from her surgery, which went well. So um, that brings me into my announcement. I have one last news and needs. So last week was a challenging worship service for your pastor because, uh, you know, I try to leave. Uh, we're just all going to wait for Fred is in the, so in the spot. Fred, 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 back up three feet off the green carpet. Go three feet. Off the green carpet. Now you two can talk all you want and we won't hear you. Okay, so that is this ceiling, right? It's a problem when somebody's talking to the back, right? You don't just get off the green carpet. You could talk all the way through the service and it won't matter, right? <laughs> uh, which is true of all you people sitting on the aisle. If you talk here, somebody over there can hear you. Every single word you say, right? <laughs> so those the people sitting on the inside can hear better. But so everybody can hear you. There's some point in the survey, in the building where somebody can hear every single thing you say wherever you're sitting. Uh, these cards. So last week, uh, somebody brought up to me at Joyce Nolte's funeral that I didn't announce no Joyce Nolte's funeral and didn't pray for the Nolte family, which was absolutely correct. And what's funny about that is it was such a marginless Sunday. So many things had gone skew that week and that weekend and on Sunday morning every single area of the church service had a problem last week and if you didn't notice say praise be to God <laughs> and if you didn't notice say thank you people who run the worship service Wow, that was very anemic for saying thank you to people who make it so that you don't even notice that that something went wrong in every single section of the worship service. So, uh, because we have a well-oiled machine, praise be to God, and thank you to the people who work hard to make this service seamless so that people are not distracted by the things that happen, you don't necessarily notice, right? So, 
uh, the person brought it up to me, and I, so a few hours later, funerals go on forever, uh, I said, oh, you know, there's two solutions to that when the pastor fails, because that was absolutely a failure on my part. There are these, so you could announce during the news and needs, right, we just had this time, or there are these little cards, and I, all week I thought about that. How many people in the church don't know why we have these little cards? And they're all different kinds of colors. Some are green and some are, some are gray, some are, you know, all different kinds, colors. And they look like this. Because the other thing that happened last week is we had two requests for prayer during the news and needs. I wrote them both down. They were both on my bulletin. Normally, I transfer them to what I'm praying from. I didn't do that. So the one that got prayed for was the one that Donna, Donna Ziza gave because she also filled out a card. <laughs> and what happens with the cards, you'll watch the deacons going down the aisle. Some of them go like this, so you notice them. And you just hand it to them, and I will know whatever you have to tell the pastor, right? So that's a way for you to communicate with the pastor during the service. If something wasn't announced or something that's really important to be announced or something that you want prayed for, that is one of the ways to do it. So Fred uh, and Jennifer did not get prayed for last week in the worship service, but you all knew to pray for them all week long. And I had been praying for Fred and Jennifer for a number of weeks. So uh, God knew, right? <laughs> but that's why Ruth was prayed for out loud and Fred and Jennifer weren't because Donna filled out a card. And that was the pastor was... Way far gone. So this is the beautiful thing about 1 Corinthians. When Paul says we are a body, and then in, uh, later on in 2 Corinthians he says um, Christ's, wait, let's see, how does it go? Uh, Christ's power is made perfect in your weakness, right? The body of Christ makes up for the failures of each other. So that's how you make up for the failure of the pastor. Got it? Okay, so everybody knows how to put in a prayer request, something you need announced to the church that didn't get out there. That's how you do it, because communication is a funny thing in that way. How do you communicate in a church, and how does everybody know if they came after somebody had announced it at some point? So today is uh, BBS Sunday, as I said. You can't tell, but Bob Newmeyer is back from his New York extravaganza, where we're, so we are grateful. <laughs> and the, all things are made whole by the body of Christ. We are so grateful that we had a music director that could just get up and play the piano because I have not always had that. And we didn't have that before Marissa. So we're grateful that that happened at the moment in which Marissa started. But we are also grateful to Marissa that she started her uh, life at Unity Presbyterian Church that is going to become her beautiful church family that loves her through thick and thin. We are grateful that she made it through her baptism by fire. Right? <laughs> Thank you, Marissa. So, welcome back, Bob. <laughs> and let's all uh, center our hearts and begin with the prelude. <laughs>
please join me in our call to worship? God comes, so don't let go of the reasons to rejoice. We will sing a song of joy to the hero who fills our lives with joy. God comes, so don't stop lifting your prayers with thanksgiving. The hero who hears our words in silence. God comes, so don't stop giving your hearts to God. We will sing a song of offering to the hero who graces us with a peace we cannot begin to understand. Please join me in our prayer of confession. O oh, blessed spirit of truth, you search the heart and test the inmost thoughts. Help me remember my sins and let me see them in your light. Strengthen me also with courage to confess them truly, hiding nothing, excusing nothing, keeping back nothing in my heart. Let's pause for a silent confession.
in your mercy, pardon and absolve, and thus heal me, that I may arise and sin no more. Through the merits and for the sake of Jesus Christ, my only Lord and Savior. Amen. Hear the good news. The Holy Spirit has been poured out upon all flesh, and we have been made one. We are no longer scattered or divided, but gathered together to build up God's realm on this earth. Thanks be to our unlikely hero, Jesus the Christ. Let's take a moment and share the peace of Christ with your neighbor. May the peace of Christ be with you all.
Lord. So let's pray. Our great holy God, we give you thanks that we can study your word in many and various ways and that it is uh, good for children to be spoken to as children and for adults to be spoken to as adults, but also that you say we as adults need to become like children. And so we are grateful for this day that helps us to understand some of what that means. We pray for your word to go forth and our lives to be changed. Amen. Hey, Supermere, Supermere, are you anywhere? Where are you, Supermere? Hey, Supermere. Hey there. Guess what? The Super Velcro twins have been trying to put together a group of heroes for some time, but they can't seem to find the right people. They've had heroes like Magnifica and Tape Man and Sticky Man. All of them have applied, but none of them have quite worked out. They've asked for help in finding the right hero for their team. Well, we meerkats are very good at working as one team. Do you have your hero reference manual? Ooh, I sure do. Here it is. Let's, <laughs> let's look up proper selection of team members. Ah, it looks like there's a case study in the book of John chapter 1. Let's take a look. When putting together a team of heroes, it's very important to choose the right people, even if the people don't seem like heroes to you and me. In the book of John, we learn that John the Baptizer was preparing people for Jesus' coming. He had a bunch of followers. One day, as he was talking to them, he saw Jesus walk by and told his followers, Look, this is the Lamb of God. John's followers had been taught to look for Jesus, so when they saw him, they decided to follow him. As they followed Jesus, he turned to them and asked, What are you looking for? Instead of answering Jesus' question, they asked him a question. Rabbi, where are you staying? Jesus replied, Come and see. So they did. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of those who first followed Jesus was a man named Andrew. He was so excited to meet Jesus that he went to tell his brother Simon. We have found the Messiah, said Andrew. So Andrew took Simon to Jesus. When Jesus saw Simon, he said, Hey, you rock! Oops, the comma's in the wrong place. I meant to say, hey, you rock. In other words, Jesus was giving Simon the new name of Peter or Cephas, which both mean rock. When they came to the town of Galilee, Jesus saw a man named Philip and said, Philip, come join my team. Philip agreed, but first went to tell his friend about Jesus. He looked for his friend, Nathaniel, and told him that he found Jesus, the son of Joseph, the carpenter from Nazareth. Nathaniel said, can anything from Nazareth be good? Philip said, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathaniel, he said, here is a genuine Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? asked Nathaniel. I saw you sitting under the fog tree before Philip called you, said Jesus. <laughs> Wait, what's a fog tree? Ah, a fig tree. That makes more sense. Yes, Jesus saw him sitting under a fig tree. Philip exclaimed, whoa, you are the Messiah. Jesus said, you believe me because I told you I saw you under the fig tree, but you haven't seen anything yet. These were just some of the first followers of Jesus. Now, I know these guys don't really seem like heroes yet. But after a few years of following Jesus, this group became heroes that changed the world. God can use any of us to do great things. And that's how it happened in the Bible. Interesting. Those heroes in the Bible, Supermere, did not look or act like heroes at first. I wonder how Jesus knew who and which to choose for his team. I'd like to think more about this along all of these heroes out here. Do you have any sidekicks here at the Hero Hotline headquarters that could help us? Ooh, we sure do. Sidekicks are part of the research department. They would be able to give more details on this case study. Great, 
let's send the, these heroes off to do some research and help the Super Velcro twins. Perfect. But before we do, we need to make sure everyone knows about the Hero Hotline Verse. It's very important for helping others. Yes, we say the Hotline Verse in our den every day. It's Romans 14, 19. It says, so let's strive for the things that bring peace and the things that fill each other up. <gasps> I love it. Let's say it again. <laughs> Romans 14, 19. Let's strive, strive for, for the things, things that, that bring, bring peace and the things that build each other up. Heroes, up, up, and away to learn about more. But you don't really have to leave. <laughs> but we are going to talk about striving for greater things today. And tomorrow, I'll be over there, but I couldn't imagine doing all of that today over there. So let's strive for the things that bring peace and the things that build each other up. This week, this place is going to be full of people. We have I, over, yesterday, we had over 80 kids already signed up. So we're going to have probably 100 kids by the time everybody come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's be happy. Right? <laughs> uh, this place is going to be full of people. And if any of you are dying to just be around with kids and you've passed your, uh, you have to have passed your, what? Clearance to whatever. Clearance. So you have to, your background check, that was the word I was thinking of. You have to have passed your background check, but if you've passed your background check with Unity Presbyterian Church, you could come and just be like a helper, right? <laughs> uh, but this place will be full of people, adults and kids, where we are meant to bring peace, focus on the things that bring peace and the things that build each other up. So when you think about kids, what kind of things do you think of that build each build kids up just tell me anybody what are things that build kids up praise true praise kids know when you're lying okay right encouragement right you can do it what else love love helps kids so maybe not hug those kids who maybe don't want to be hugged but be loving right what else compliments oh you did that so well I really like how you helped so-and-so. You went down that, I mean, you can find a compliment. I'm so grateful that you were able to go down the hallway without hitting another kid. <laughs> right? You can find a compliment that in reinforces the behavior you want, right? How about the things that bring peace? What kind of things bring peace? Patience. Acceptance, kindness, sometimes intervention and mediation, right? So kids, it's easy to think about uh, what kinds of things bring, you know, kids along. We don't always choose the right way, but we intend to choose the right way with kids, right? Usually, in general, people in a church, especially that are doing vacation Bible school, are not trying to mess up those kids, right? However... I want to tell you a cautionary tale. I once asked a friend of mine in my, uh, she was in my covenant group in Forest Church, and I said, you know, so Forest had gone to this church that had fired their last pastor while he was on sabbatical. It was ugly. It was gross. Half the people left. There was a lot of ickiness. And so I said to this gal, you know, your kids both grew up in this church. Why do you think one is still involved in a church as an adult, and one will have nothing to do with the church. I mean, they're so close in age. They had similar Sunday school. They had similar, right? This is something I've thought about, about 85-year-olds who have always been in the same Bible study, and one's excited and one's not. But I was thinking about kids. And I said, why do you think that happened? And she said, ah, well, uh, she said, my kids grew up in a time in the church where there wasn't a lot of conflict originally, and yet, one being slightly younger than the other couple years wasn't really ready to hear the kind of complaints that people give around church, the kind of confusion people bring to church, the kind, of, like, they're kids, and they're listening, right? And she said, and he wants nothing to do with church because church people are mean, and all they do is complain, and they stand out in the parking lot, and they tell her what's wrong, and they get on the phone, and they, because she was on council, 
tell her what's wrong, and they'd sit in the pews, and they'd complain about what's wrong, right? Because we live in a complaining culture, and we give ourselves permission to be citizens of this world rather than citizens of the other world, right? <laughs> but the thing is, okay, so that was hurting her kids. Her one kid just came out, I want nothing to do with this. But do we really think that it's any different with adults? You're all shaking your head. It's not any different with adults. We think, there's been lots of research on this, we think, oh, we'll get it off our chest. Sometimes you speak it and it makes it worse, right? You just get worked up. You get worked up, you get worked up. So maybe the answer for us is to get ourselves in our prayer closets, which we just talked about, and to say, God, what things should I give feedback on? Because absolutely, we want feedback, right? We want good and bad feedback. We want to know if something isn't working. We want to know if something is working in life, right? But it doesn't matter what you're, it doesn't matter that, like, I'm not talking about complaining about the pastor, because none of you are ever going to complain about me, right? <laughs> but I'm talking about how you, people, like, little pictures are watching, but also big pictures are watching, right? It's not any better for the 90-year-old. I once had somebody leave a church. She left in a huff. She had embarrassed herself to no end with what she did that she felt very righteous about until she saw people's response. And there was a universally negative response to her behavior. And um, she wrote three people in the church letters about her leaving. It was so interesting. And then she called to tell me who she let, wrote letters to. It was so interesting. So again, she feels really righteous, right? She calls the pastor until I wrote these three letters to these three people and they know what really went on, right? One of those ladies that she wrote was 89 years old. Tell me why that 89-year-old needed to hear anything from that lady. Right? I mean, what? Really? Really? An 89-year-old does not need to hear your complaints about anything. They've lived a good and gracious life, or they've lived a bad and icky life. But they really don't need to hear whatever your complaints are about an organization they're part of, right? They're not going to leave their church at 89. They're not going to, like, you're just causing trouble. This was a gal who had no idea she was causing trouble, right? Well, part of the problem was she didn't have maturity in the faith. Peace is maturity in the faith. Building one another up is maturity in the faith. We are to strive for maturity in the faith. And how we do that is we practice peace, the things of peace. So the verse this week is let's strive for the things that bring peace and the things that build each other up. So let's do that as a church. When you come on the grounds, there's always kids watching. I was once in a church where the new pastor was preaching. We were visiting after having been gone. We'd been on staff there. Was preaching. There was a, it was a Saturday night service, small group. There's a three-year-old literally rolling beneath the pews, right, you know, <laughs> because of no child care. He was literally rolling back and forth in the pews. This was in New Jersey. And the pastor asked a rhetorical question. What, what brings, you know, what kinds of things? Jesus says bring peace. What does peace mean? And he answered that three-year-old underneath the pew. He's listening, right? Good cautionary tale for that church. So we are going to bring peace. We are going to dwell on the things of peace. We are going to dwell on the things of building up. And we're going to come out more joy-filled, more peaceful, more gracious, more gentle, more self-controlled, more kind. Because we love God and we want to live according to God's purposes. Amen? All right. Great. Let's sing. We have a different song. So somewhere in here, I have a way to announce that our song has changed. <laughs> the song, I think, is If You Want to Be a Hero. And Jess is nodding her head. And you should have a new um, insert, but I can't help you. And the words are on the screen <laughs> if you don't have an insert. <laughs> Love your enemy even when it hurts. That's what he says. Cause heroes are called to sacrifice. Serve the giver of life. And in the end, it's worth the price. To 
Amen. You all were not singing, man. <laughs> I would like to invite the Germeyer family up. <laughs> oh, and Paul Patterson. Can't leave him out. Hey. Can you hear that? Bailey, right? This is Bailey, everybody. This is Adam. This is Amelia. And this is Graham. For those of you who don't know them, talk to them afterwards. Because <laughs> that's one of the things it means to build each other up, right? So in the sacrament of baptism, we do the sacrament of baptism in part because in Matthew 28, before Jesus ascends, he tells us that the authority for this comes from him. He says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So Jesus then commands us, go therefore into all nations Make, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded with you. And then Jesus says, I remember, I am with you till the end of the age. Like, we are not left without power to do that. And so we believe that in baptism there is power. So we obey the word of our high priest, Jesus the Messiah, and we are confident in his promises and so we baptize those whom God has called. And we believe that God has called families into the worship together of Christ. And that there is power in the sealing of the Holy Spirit. And so it seals, the baptism seals and gives a seal and a sign to God through the Holy Spirit that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death uh, and unites us with Christ in his death and resurrection. That's the imagery of the down and the up. And then by water and the Holy Spirit, <laughs> we're made members of the church, the body of Christ. And then we're joined in Christ's ministry of love as we grow. So the kids will come this week, some of whom have been baptized in this church, and they will be showing the love of Christ because they have been baptized and it's going forth in their life. And they will show justice and peace and kindness because of that. And then let's all of us remember with joy our own baptisms, whether we were baptized as children or as adults as we celebrate this baptism. On behalf of the... Go slow. <laughs> is this working? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Go. on behalf of the session, I present Graham Scott Germeyer, child of Adam 
and Amelia, Amelia Dermeyer to receive the sacrament of baptism. So, Adam and Amelia, do you desire for Graham to be baptized? So they're doing it freely, not under compulsion. Relying under, hey, it's like the wedding ceremony, right? Relying on God's grace, do you promise to live the Christian faith and to teach that faith to Graham? Bailey, do you promise to try to treat, teach that faith to Graham? Good. Do you, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture Graham by word and deed, with love and prayer, encouraging him, encouraging him to know and follow Christ and to be a faithful member of Christ's church? All right, so through the sacrament of baptism, we enter a covenant that God has established in Jesus Christ. Jesus has done it. And so within this covenant, God gives us new life, life, strengthens us to resist evil, and nurtures us in love. And through, so in choosing this covenant, we choose whom we'll serve. Because there are many gods to serve, and this is the one we do, right? So Adam and Amelia. <laughs> so trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from sin and renounce the ways of evil and its power in the world? Do you profess Jesus Christ as your ruler and savior? And will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying the word and showing God's love? Great. Okay, we're going to pray over the water. we got to stop being unceremonial. <laughs> we give you thanks, eternal God, for you nourish and sustain all living things by the gift of water. In the beginning of time, your spirit moved over the watery chaos, calling forth order and life. In the time of Noah, you destroyed evil by the waters of the flood, giving righteousness a new beginning. You led Israel out of slavery through the waters of the sea into the freedom of the promised land. In the waters of Jordan, Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with your spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, Christ set us free from sin and death and opened the way to eternal life. And so we thank you, God, for the waters of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. From it, we are raised to share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so we pray for your Holy Spirit to move over this water, that it may be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth. Wash away the sin of all who are cleansed by it. Raise them to new life and graft them to the body of Christ. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon Graham, that he may have the power to do your will and continue forever in the risen life of Christ. To you be all praise, honor, and glory through Jesus Christ our Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Hey. Graham Germeyer, you're going to come to me buddy. Hi. We're old friends, huh? Yeah. Hi. Are you ready? Are you ready? Graham? Yeah, you don't like it. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, I baptize you today. May the Holy Spirit live in you forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Look, they're clapping for you. So Graham has been received into the one holy universal and apostolic church through baptism. Yeah, by the power of the Holy Spirit, buddy. Yeah, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you have become a member of the household of God. You're sealed. So welcome him fully into our unity family to, and be the relations that he deserves. We have offered our bodies to Christ today. And we are to offer our cash to Christ today. So during the offertory, which Bobby's going to play, uh, I'm going to come around and you're all going to welcome Graham, right? With smiles and joy. Amen.
give you thanks that you have done it. And we give you thanks, God, that even though you own it all, you share it with us. And so we return to you a portion of that and pray that it would be done, used to do your good work in the world. We praise you for your gentleness and humility. We thank you for your invitation to rest in you. Help us come to you with all our joys and all of our burdens, understanding how they fit into our life of faith. So Holy Spirit, we thank you today for the gift of family. Help us to be instruments of love to all our family members, whether they are biological or they are found. We trust you to further the mission and ministry of Unity Presbyterian Church, as well as other churches in the area who we are not in competition with. We pray that we would all be a beacon of light in our communities. Help us faithfully represent Christ by our li lives and our words. And we pray especially this week for VBS, that we would be a beacon of light for kids whose churches can't put together a VBS and for kids who have never had any Christian upbringing in their homes and that in all of that you would be glorified and they would find their way to you. We pray for those suffering the ravages of war across the globe, including especially this week Ukraine and Sudan, who it feels like we're praying for a lot, as well as the flooded places as far flung as China and Oklahoma. We know that natural disasters are challenging. And so we thank you for all who are sacrificing their time and resources to meet those needs. And we pray that you would bring war and hardship to an end sooner rather than later. We entrust to you those who are in trouble, the aged and the infirm, the widow and the orphan, the sick and the suffering, the jobless and the unhappy in a job. And we pray especially for those who are important to us. We praise you for Ruth Hutchinson's good surgery and we pray that she would continue to have um, good recovery. We pray for um, Pam and Carolyn's great niece, Bella, who has a viral infection. She's two and she's it's affecting her face and her mouth and that's really icky in a two-year-old and so we pray for healing for her. At the same time we pray for uh, Fred Jr. And, and Jennifer that they would continue to get well. We are grateful for Fred's improvement and we pray for Jennifer especially she's feeling dizziness etc that that would pass. We pray for Becca to find a job and we give you thanks for a good uh, vacation for her and for social media that lets us join along with her and we pray for uh, a church to come together for her soon and that she would know the call and they would know the call. We pray for Linda Halley who fell and broke her toe and is beat up as happens when you fall and we pray for uh, Jack Kerr who fell in the fourth and broke his pelvis and we pray for him and for Carol as they struggle with that and for especially Nancy Osmiansky who is their caregiver daughter that all of them would know the power of your Holy Spirit with them and know the hope and friendship that we bring to them uh, as we pray and care for them. Mighty one, we thank you for the example of our friends and loved ones who have preceded us. And so we thank you today, especially for the witness of Joyce Nolte in this church and the ways in which she served this church in so many ways, especially in Christian ed. And we pray for the Nolte family that they would, uh, they would know how to live in the hope of Christ and the truth of the resurrection such that they are joy-filled at a future uh, reunion. We ask that you would hear us in this moment of silence for those things we cannot or have not shared. So we give you thanks, God, for all you have done and all you will do and for teaching us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen please remain standing and if you have to stand on the pews to see because you're short that's fine for the final song
amazing peace. You got my mind. Your truth unchanging is my guide. Amazing hope that never fails. Though darkness falls, you will prevail. In Jesus, you are faithful. Jesus, you are able. you are for me. Grace, I am freely given. And grace, grace has broken every chain and now I can freely live. Thank you for your grace. Help me share your grace with the world. Thank you for your have the power to bring peace, the things of peace, and to build up one another because we have experienced God's grace. Grace freely given should be grace freely given away. And so we can always be the bigger people. So let's do it. Now may the peace of Christ go forth with you as we have gathered in Christ's name. May we have experienced the wonder of God that only comes when two or three are gathered May we go forth in peace and share in grace in all of these things. May we be fully nourished until the day Christ comes again in glory. Amen. Amen.